I'm a dietitian who has helped hundreds of people successfully lose weight, but the real power comes in keeping that weight off. So in today's video, I'm going to share seven effective habits that I use personally and I share with my clients to help them stay slim after losing weight. Because what good is it to lose all the weight if you end up putting it back on again? If you're new here, I'm Maria and I'm a registered dietitian. Welcome to the channel. Now I want to first take a moment to say that weight control is not always an easy task. And I don't want these points to make it sound simplified because the truth is that it is easier for some to maintain their weight more than others. There are huge genetic components to weight. Your hormones impact your weight, what medications you're on. Even how your mother ate when you were in the womb can impact how you manage your weight later in life. So please don't be disheartened if you're struggling. You may need a deeper dive and the help of a dietitian to do this. So a huge centerpiece of any behavioral weight loss intervention is encouraging people to self-monitor. And a very useful way for people to do this is by checking their weight. Now, how often you check your weight is going to depend, but the aim here is to really encourage self-monitoring and keeping yourself in check. As a dietitian, I often have people who like to come to me to check their weight and they like to keep coming back and it helps them stay accountable and that is fine, but you shouldn't be needing to come see a dietitian for the rest of your life just to keep in check with yourself. You should be able to self-monitor. And one of the easiest ways people can do this is by checking their weight. And there are caveats because the weighing scales is not truly accurate and it's only one measurement. So the optimal frequency for how often you weigh yourself is going to depend. When people are actively trying to lose weight, I often recommend checking your weight every two weeks. This is usually enough for most people. It's more likely to show truer results of focusing on the big picture and it will be less impacted by daily fluctuations. And that way you won't be disheartened if it doesn't go the way you'd hoped. Now, if you want to weigh yourself daily, you can, but you should be looking at averages. And when it comes to maintaining your weight, I have people who do like to check their weight every single day, some weekly, some fortnightly and some monthly. It's finding what works for you and just be consistent. Now daily weights, we know they are not very accurate. They can be impacted by so many different things like how you slept, what you ate the day before, if you exercised or not, and that's only naming a few. I can do a full video on this in the future, but I can't argue that some people just do like checking their weight every day and they find it helps them. I would always just say that make sure it's not dictating the tone of your day, whatever that number tells you on the scales in the morning. It can become a little bit obsessive and you are so much more than a number. But there was a study done in 2019 with 1000 participants and it did suggest that daily measurements led to greater weight loss when they compared it to groups of people who weighed themselves less frequently. However, I do think it's important to note that 80% of the participants in this study were male. And from my experiences working with clients, I do find males have less of an emotional tie to the weighing scales. So it can work a little bit better for them. They also tend to have slightly less daily fluctuations because they don't have as many hormonal shifts day to day as us women have. But this habit of weighing yourself keeps you stay on track with your weight loss or your weight maintenance goals. So if you feel like you've maybe been overdoing it for a couple of days and the weight is starting to creep up, it can encourage you to then go for that run that maybe you had been putting off or to pack your lunch today instead of going to the staff canteen. It's like having a weekly budget. If you go over your budget one week, you want to know so you can fix it. If you don't realize you're overspending each week, it begins to add up. Now, if you don't like to weigh yourself, there are other ways that you can self-monitor because weighing yourself is not for everyone, particularly if you've had a disordered relationship with food or your body. It could be that every now and again, you make an effort to write down a three day food log and this will help bring awareness to your eating habits. It will help you pick up on any mindless eating or grazing that might be sneaking in. Or it could be keeping a habit lock. Have three daily habits for yourself and self-monitor how often you're complying with them. I'm currently doing a habit log for 10,000 steps, eating mindfully and prepping my breakfast and lunch. And it's really helpful. Now I'm gonna pause here and ask that if you're enjoying the video so far, I would really appreciate it if you hit the red subscribe button below. It really helps support my channel. And if you're looking for healthy high protein recipe ideas, make sure to follow me over on Instagram. Now, if you are going to weigh yourself, the best time to weigh yourself is first thing in the morning, after you've gone to the restroom, but before you eat or drink anything. And the reason for this is that your body has had enough time to digest all of the food and drinks that you've had the day before. And when you weigh yourself in the morning, you want to wear as little clothing as possible, or at least wear the same thing every time you step up on the scale. And if you choose to weigh yourself once a week or every two weeks, make sure you weigh yourself on the same day of the week. For example, a Wednesday, because your weight on a Monday after a weekend might be very different to what it would look like on a Friday. So another big habit that people who have successfully managed to keep their weight off after losing it is that they are organized. 
and there is no secret cheat code here. I always say to my clients, nobody accidentally falls into a salad for lunch or a lovely home cooked, nice balanced dinner. You need to have some sort of a system and some element of organization in place. And it doesn't mean that everything needs to be crazy planned out and that you're eating out of Tupperware all of the time. But taking some time to plan ahead each week is important. So for me, I like on a Sunday evening to do a little meal prep and get myself organized for the next three to four days. And this will at least get me through until Wednesday. Then I might do a mini meal prep for the rest of the week. And then at the weekend, I'm a lot less structured because I'm eating out a little bit more or I'm recipe testing. And this is what works for me. So it's finding what works for you too. Let me know if you'd like me to do some videos on how I work my system. And I am working on a guide and some meal plans to help you and do some of the organization for you. So if this is something that you might be of interest in, make sure to sign up to my email newsletter. I'll leave it linked in the description box below. And when you do, you also get a free recipe ebook. Now I'm presuming that everybody watching this video is thinking that I am just about to tell you not to eat processed foods, but you might be in for a shock here. To get very real, eating healthy can be challenging. You have to be quite organized as just mentioned, but then you throw life, work, family commitments, and even more into the mix. And it can become very easy to just throw in the towel. And I always say that if you make nutrition too complicated, it will just become something that you don't want to do. And in a world where most of us tend to be busier than ever, have more commitments than ever. And if you don't want to spend your whole life in the kitchen and you'd rather spend some quality time with your family, your kid or your kids, processed foods do in fact have their place. And yes, I am a dietitian on the internet telling you that. You can come for me in the comments if you wish. But I never expect any of my clients to be completely eating whole foods all of the time. I don't even do that and I don't even have kids. But tinned beans, microwavable packets of rice and quinoa, jars of pasta sauce, these are all examples of processed foods that can come in handy. Olive oil is technically a processed food when you think about it. It didn't just come out of the olives like that. Someone had to process it to remove the oil and then put it in a bottle. Now I do of course advocate for staying away from foods that are highly processed most of the time. And these are foods that have really long ingredient lists and in the ingredient list, there's lots of things that you don't even recognize. But if I can get a client to make a pasta bolognese at home for her family, maybe she needs the help of a pre-made sauce, but she manages to add lots of vegetables into this dish, that is still a win. And it can be a big step forward for a lot of people. When you need to take some shortcuts, do. Because healthy eating is a long game for life and trying to be 100% perfect all of the time usually does not get you very far. Now, I really like this point, and it's one that I've started to adopt a lot more lately. And it's that people who tend to maintain their weight loss, they tend to eat their meals out twice. So for me, as a child, I was always told to clear my plate. And to this day, I still really like to clear my plate, even if I'm beyond full and satisfied. But if you go out to a nice restaurant and you're served a monstrous portion of food and you can't eat it all, there is no need to feel obligated to eat it. Now this is just my observation, but I think people are really good at doing this in the States. Maybe I'm wrong here, so please comment below and let me know your thoughts. But an observation of mine is that in Ireland and in the UK and some places in Europe, there's a lot of places where I would not dream of asking for a box to take home the rest of my dinner, unless it was maybe a pizza place. But I was in America a lot over the recent months and I also live in Bermuda and it's a lot more normalized to ask for a box to take home the rest of your dinner if you can't finish it even in the really fancy places. They almost give you the box when they see that you're struggling. And I think this is great. It eliminates food waste. And if you have this really amazing meal and you don't want to leave it behind, this way you don't have to feel bad if you can't eat it all. So it's a really good habit to make when you are eating out to take your time, enjoy the meal. It takes time for your brain to send signals to your stomach to tell you that you're full. So eat it slowly, see how you're feeling. If you're still hungry, that's fine, finish the meal. But if not, ask somebody for a box so you can bring the rest of it home. You can enjoy it that evening or the next day. Now we always hear that variety is important for a balanced diet. And it is, I have said that before on this channel, but too much variety can backfire. And people who are successfully managing to control their weight and their eating habits, they have what I like to call a food groove. The majority of their meals consist of well-planned staples. There are a few surprises thrown in, but for the most part, their diets are fairly predictable. And what I mean by this is that they are fairly consistent with their major meals. It might be having their regular go-to overnight oats for breakfast, but changing up the toppings during the week. It could be having a routine salad at lunch, but maybe changing up from grilled chicken to tin tuna the next day. And they have two to three fail-safe 
easy to make dinners that they can go back to time and time again, particularly when life gets busy. They can always fall back on these. Yes, you might get more creative at times, and I love recipe testing and trying new things, but I consistently have a few easy to throw together, balanced meals that I can go back to time and time again, particularly when I'm busy, and I know exactly how to make them, I don't need to open any recipe book. And a lot of them are made from staples that I nearly always have on hand in my kitchen. So if I haven't done an organized grocery shop that week, I don't really need to worry. But always having some sort of a loosely prescribed meal time routine can limit the opportunities for ordering in when you're tired or grabbing that unhealthy option at work. Because again, if nutrition is too complicated, it becomes something that you don't want to do. Now, when it comes to what type of exercise is best, I always say start at level one, which is just finding something that you enjoy and stick to it consistently. You don't have to overcomplicate it more than that. Now, if you can go a step further up to level two, you want to try and have a balance of both cardio exercise, like running, fast walking or cycling, and some strength resistance exercise too. This is the type of exercise that will utilize your muscles. A balance of both is the most important thing for your health. And really the main focus at the end of the day should be on your health, not a number on the scale. Now, another big component here though is not the structured exercise that you do. It's not that weekly gym class that you go to or that 40 minute run that you try to do twice a week. It's in fact the general movement that you also build into your everyday life. This is walking that little bit further, taking the stairs, carrying your groceries. All of this movement contributes to what we call non-exercise activity thermogenesis, or NEAT for short. So this is the amount of energy that you're using throughout the day that isn't coming from that planned out exercise. And this is actually a bigger calorie burn than the structured exercise that you were trying to do in the first place. So making your lifestyle just that little bit more active in your daily routines is really valuable. Now, another really big one here is that people who manage to maintain their weight tend to eat regularly. And if necessary, they will also include snacks. But the key here is balanced snacks. I have a full video on this. If it's out, I'll link below. If not, it should be out in the next few weeks. So keep an eye out. But by having regular meals and snacks, you have more control than when you do eventually sit down to have your meal. This prevents overindulging and it helps with managing your portion sizes. And you can eat in a way that feels much better for your body. It's also just a nicer way to live. Nobody wants to be walking around for the first half of the day uncomfortably starved because you're trying to fast and then the rest of the day uncomfortably stuffed because you've eaten loads of food when you finally let yourself eat. So eating regularly is often an overlooked but easy to incorporate tool that can help you massively when it comes to your weight and your eating habits. So there we have it, seven effective habits of people who lose weight and keep it off. But there are seven more. I'm not sharing all the secrets today. So stay tuned for part two, where I will be revealing seven more effective habits that you can incorporate to help you manage your weight too. Now, if you enjoyed this video, or if you're still trying to get some of that weight off, then you'll definitely enjoy my weight loss video series, which I'll leave linked below. As always, thank you very much for watching. Stay happy and healthy, and I'll see you again next week. Thanks for watching.